All right, hello everybody. I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm uh, Atlas, not the cool guy from CTF. I'm much lamer than him, so if you missed his talk, I apologize, it was pretty good. And uh, I'd also like to tell everybody I'm really sorry that you couldn't get into Dan Kaminsky's talk, but uh, we'll, we'll try to be pretty good too. Um, we're Chaos Theory. We're uh, Chaos Theory because Shmoo Group was already taken. Up here on stage with me, we have uh, Dr. Chaos. We have Beth, a little bit out of order on our slide here. We have uh, Fade right here, Dig Unix, and Archon. Also uh, joining us out in the audience there is uh, one of my collaborators, Johnner, and, uh, and Paul, Sasquatch, in case you're wondering. Today's specials, what are we serving up for you? We've got two projects. First one, what I'm going to be talking a little bit about here is NARC. Uh, the, guy, the whole idea here is we're going to transform the output of your scan data. We're not going to recreate scans. We're not going to be doing scans. We're not sniffing. Instead, we're going to take the output. In this case, uh, we've got Nessus. We're uh, hopefully going to have NMAP for you by the end of the week. Um, the XML parsing and data normalization, we'll get to that. Um, but tools to produce quantifiable, meaningful, and, uh, and some hot-looking results. Um, Sam IL up next, sort of the, uh, the natural evolution of the product that we released at ShmooCon, uh, which is Anonymous OS. This is a black box gateway. We'll create a secure, anonymizing, transparent firewall. So, uh, you know, maybe when you're behind it, nobody will notice all the nasty things you like to do online. So, diving right in with NARC. First of all, I represent only myself. I'm a little bit irresponsible, so I can't take on anything else. So, uh, yeah, work likes this one. Why do we do this? Well, started off a pen test a few months back and uh, was supposed to have about 4,000 hosts involved, normal amount of data. Instead, it ended up being about 92,000. Um, so a little bit of scope creep and a lot of data to try and analyze. Uh, if you guys are familiar, Excel cuts off after 65,000 rows. So you have to start doing something a little bit more creative in terms of pulling out what you're looking at. Um, what else do we want to do? We wanted to be able to do a little bit of trending and vulnerability analysis quickly. Um, I don't know how many of you work in, in consulting, pen testing, vulnerability analysis, but very rarely does a client come back to you and say, you know, you guys just, you don't cost enough. We really wish that you would spend two or three more weeks going through this data. So we wanted to try and cut down the time there and, and produce some pretty nice results in terms of reporting format. So a little bit about security reporting. The things that don't work, selling on FUD, I think we all know this at this point, but you know, you can't go in and say, oh, we're going to get hacked. Uh, most people don't really respond well to that. Also, you don't want to come in with, uh, with too much data. Hey, here's, here's 10,000 pages of results that we got out of a scan tool. Mr. VP, please give me some more money. Um, they, they rarely like that one. Um, oversimplification. If you're talking to the guy that, uh, that is in charge of fixing this stuff, you don't want to say, hey, it's good. Eh. It's bad. You want to give them a little bit more than that. But you also don't want to walk into the, uh, the director of IT and explain how the flux capacitor is, uh, is over-inverting the Jeffries tubes and you're going to blow your phase inducing. So, you know. So what do you got to do here? You got to report to multiple levels. You have your network engineer. He wants some details. He wants remediation steps. He wants something that he can hang his hat on so when he goes and does this thing and there's still a problem later on, he's not getting canned. He doesn't want the graphs, charts, and all that crap. Um, you guys are probably familiar with this. As you move up the chain a little bit, you have, to start, uh, you have to start summarizing a little bit more. You have to start taking out some of those complicated and hard words like protocol and, uh, and port. As you go up even further, what you have to start talking about is uh, you know, a thumbs up, thumbs down kind of view. Hey, information security, we're good. Nah, we're not so good. So what are we going to do to make security reporting better? Well, number one, we need to rely on objective and quantitative data. Because uh, when, you, when you're going in and you're trying to, uh, again, when you're trying to push an information security program from the standpoint of we want to remediate these vulnerabilities, we want to protect these hosts, and we have this data that is of this value. You need to do that in a, in a numerically sound and mathematical way, not in the, well, I kind of feel like this host is important and uh, let's spend a little bit of money. We also want some uh, correlated data. You know, you want average number of vulnerabilities by platform. If you're going to decide to move platforms in the future, you may want to have a, a test program. You may want to see, hey, we're spending half of our time patching Windows boxes. I don't know why that one would come to mind. Um, maybe we should move to something that doesn't have, uh, you know, Super Tuesday. So what have we got for you here? 
Uh, we have, we're going to have, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to have some import scripts for, uh, for a few other tools right now. We're able to pull in anything that can output into SQL. Um, and in this case, we've got Nessus WX scripts that we can show you. Some canned queries to, uh, to show you, you know, what, what type of things you should be looking at. And of course, pretty, pretty colors and uh, some really, really slow JavaScript. So if anybody would like to see me after to uh, help me out with that, that'd be awesome. So let me see here. I'll switch over. This is our tool. Um, we're going to go ahead and import some data. Um, this data is a result of a quick little scan of the Aladdin this morning. So anybody who's staying there, I'm, I apologize. All righty. Let's come back around. And So we're going to run a report. We have a few canned CSS styles here, and you can, of course, modify those to match any color schemes that you want, any sort of image replacement. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, say again? You know, it came down at the very last minute, and it was the one that had to go. But if you want it, see me afterwards, and I'll give you the script, just because I like you. So, uh, so we'll go ahead and, and grab citrus. Because what, what style would be complete without one called citrus? We want to see, uh, let's take a look at everything for any database. Because surprisingly, there were a few. So here we go. You have uh, a couple of Postgres vulnerabilities. This was, a, of course, as you'll notice, this was the, uh, the router, so happily provided by Cox. Um, and then underneath, apparently a client with uh, MySQL running. It's probably my box. Who knows, right? <laughs> so uh, you can sort these also. And this is, as I alluded to, the slow-running JavaScript. <laughs> um, you can sort by, uh, in, in this case, you know, we only have two criticalities. You can sort by the description um, or by the scan date. And in this case, all of the data came from one date. But it'd be uh, fairly simple to, to correlate between them. All righty. So that's the basics. Again, basic stuff right now. Um, launch back in. As we move forward, what are we working on and what do we have? We have, uh, first of all, some of my development team uh, helped me out with this. Was on PHP 4. Um, we we're releasing on PHP 5, so that caused uh, a lot of fun last night. Um, that's why some of these things aren't there right now. For instance, some of the AJAX got pushed off the page. What we're looking at doing is fully customizable queries where it will uh, provide you a Google Suggest interface. So as you're typing in, it'll go ahead and populate and say, oh, by the way, you know, you've got these, uh, these other weirdo services that, that are going to drop down. Um, extensible import framework. This is a big one. This is, this is one that uh, has, has given us fits, and we really haven't found anybody we could steal the code from, which was really sad. Um, but data import from XML into a SQL statement is, uh, is kind of a pain based on the hierarchical structure and the data normalization that's required there. Um, if anybody has any experience with that, again, I'd love to hear from you afterwards. We have something that we think uh, probably by the end of the week we'll have something out where we can uh, go ahead and pull in your results from Nmap or any other XML tool. Um, Ultimately, what we'd like to have is a web-based front end for graphically creating regular expressions to parse any sort of tool that you can get data out of. So if you've got a uh, scan tool that, say, does your application layer but only reports into HTML or only reports into PDF, go ahead and be able to parse that out and, and based on regular expressions within the file, pull in the data that we want and then cross-correlate it to your platform vulnerabilities or your operating system identification or your banner grabs, anything like that, and then be able to quickly sort through and, and, and limit that data down. So after that, we, uh, we move right along to Sam I.L. and uh, Dr. Chaos. Thank you very much, uh, Alice. Uh, all right, so without further ado, we will jump into Sam I.L., which is our new secure anonymizing megalomaniacal autonomous encrypting links. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the history behind SAMIL. We're going to talk about motivations, why we built it. Uh, we'll talk about what it does, how it works, and, uh, and then show you a, 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 as well a live demo of SAMIL. Um, in the process, we're also going to expose you to Chaos Theory's internal software development lifecycle. This begins with phase one, what we call the enthusiasm phase. <laughs> a little bit of history here. First of all, uh, in... Uh, 
Earlier this year, uh, we actually introduced Anonymo OS. And show of hands, how many here saw our presentation at ShmooCon? A moderate number of hands. How many here have used Anonymo OS? Uh, not bad. So, all right. January, we introduced Anonymo OS, our first public release. We believe it's the world's coolest OpenBSD Live CD. And then in April, we, uh, we went to layer one. The intention was to either release a maintenance build or documentation. We opted for documentation. So we exposed the build process for putting together your own Anonymo OS. Anonymo OS was cool. However, this is DEF CON. And DEF CON goers demand more. We don't do zero days. Therefore, what we brought instead was SAMIL. Uh, I'm going to turn the mic over immediately here to Beth, and I'm going to let her talk a little bit about why we did what we did and why we, are in the, why, why we go through the trouble of building tools to provide anonymity, tools like AnonymOS, tools like SAMIL. So with that, I will turn over the mic to Beth. OK, what motivates us? Well, unfortunately, in today's climate, there's plenty to motivate us. All your base are belong to the NSAT&T, anyone? Uh, Internet-facing small businesses need anonymity and security, but that's pretty hard for them to achieve. And online marketing, profiling, tracking data, they have it. Did they ask for it? I don't know. OK, for those of you who don't pay attention to current events, I'm just going to go through a brief rundown. <laughs> that would be a um, Suck. <laughs> did oh excuse me. She did, got finger happy. I do. Go I back. get very happy fingers. Did any of you give your permission for your phone company to turn over your records to anyone? No. No. Nope. Oh. Why not? Gee. Damn. Weirdos. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and I are not the only ones who didn't know about this. No judges knew about this either. So. Although this doesn't really relate to a secure anonymizing gateway per se, it gives me the, the idea that maybe there's other things that you, me, and judges don't know about. And this guy. If you don't know who this guy is, this is our attorney general. And he is the one who refers to the Geneva Conventions as quaint. Um, I guess it's his turn to try and figure out a good way to make such data collection legal. And he does a pretty good job. He throws around a lot of words like reasonable. Everybody wants to be reasonable. And a couple of, we have to protect the children's. And that always works. Um, and it works on the legislature. Apparently, a legislative champion was found almost immediately. Ms. Dejet of Colorado did this nice piece of legislation, which uh, requires your ISP to keep your identifying data as a subscriber for at least one year after you cease to be their customer. Between me and my ISP, we don't think that's very reasonable. Uh, the FBI wants to get in on the act. The FBI legislating, yes, they draft legislation. Although that's not their gig, they had to find a proxy, Senator Mike DeWine from Ohio. Anybody from Ohio? Did you vote? Did you vote for a senator? If you didn't, now's the time to start doing your research. Um, yeah, the FBI just isn't interested in retention, though. The FBI wants to have ISPs give them real-time access to the network um, created by ISPs. And they also want manufacturers of Netgear to build in backdoors for them. The last time I heard about a piece of legislation that made my life easier or forced industry to do something that helped me to get my job done, I don't know. I'm not that young, but I still can't remember one. So the FBI must have a lot of pull there. And of course, it's not just here in the States. Europe, the great bastion of privacy, is also caving to the pressure. And then there's marketing. That, I think, is the next frontier for data mining for the government and other people that we don't really want to have our information. Marketing information. They know where you're going online, what you're buying. They know what you're searching for, what you're curious about, and who you are. They all say that they don't correlate this information and keep identifying info together with aggregate info about anonymous browse browsing. Um, I don't know if that's really the case all the time. They have all the info. They store it. 
And it can be mined by marketers, it can be sold to the highest bidder, and ultimately it can be subpoenaed by your government. Geolocation is also very interesting with wireless, muni wireless networks. They can now actually market to you based on where you're physically standing. If you're by Fisherman's Wharf, they'll market to you, you know, ads for a seafood restaurant. If you're not by Fisherman's Wharf or you're in Chinatown, you know, they'll give you ads for something else. But they know where you're standing, not just what you're looking up on the net, not just what you bought three years ago. It, it's all information that they have and they store onto the underworld. <laughs> Uh, I love this Fox News headline, cybercrime, more widespread, skillful, and dangerous than ever. It's like new improved cybercrime with fresh, clean scent. Um, and they're right, it is improved because now they're organized. Speaking of organized crime, card cartels, uh, mafia, everybody likes to talk about the Russian mafia. And the bottom line is they're commoditizing hacking. Um, there's always been a little bit of that, but now it's on a broader scale and it's continuing to evolve with our defenses and our technology evolution. And there's that old Chinese curse, I think, I hope you live in interesting times. For the commoditizing of hacking, I think the next 10 years will be very interesting times. Um, is it hopeless? Absolutely not. There's great folks like the EFF who are ever vigilant and actually looking out for your interests and my interests. You know, they could uh, give a good lesson to our public servants. And they're not alone. They're not the only group. There's tons of them out there here in the States, online, broad groups, country-specific groups. If you look for them, you'll find them, and they're all doing really good work, and you should support them. There's also alternatives to the status quo. There's, they've been around for a long time. They're not new. Anonymous remailers, tools like we're incorporating in our secure, anonymizing, encrypting Linux, uh, you know, if you haven't heard of an anonymous remailer, by the way, if you're that young, go ahead, find out about them, and build something better. The alternatives are out there, and it's worth it to check them out. Oh, I like this too. The bottom line is the reason why Google Analytics, for example, has two different privacy policies, one for Europe and one for the United States, is because in Europe, they elected representatives who looked after their interests. And California is very smart as well because they're doing similar things. And we could all learn a lesson from them. This one's so good, I'm just gonna read it straight to you. <clears throat> this is in addition to the California State Constitution with explicit privacy language. They quoted uh, someone here, the right of privacy is the right to be left alone. I believe that was Brandis. It is a fundamental and compelling interest it protects our homes, our families, our thoughts, our emotions, our expressions, our personalities, our freedom of communion, and our freedom to associate with the people that we choose. It prevents government and business interests from collecting and stockpiling unnecessary information about us and from misusing information gathered for one purpose in order to serve other purposes or to embarrass us. I think they got it right. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Chaos. Okay, so this begins Chaos Theory Software Development Lifecycle Phase 2. This is what we call disillusionment. Uh, we've identified a premise and we said, holy shit, everything's really fucked up. Now we've got to go out and fix it. What are we going to do? So uh, here began the design goals. Here's where we started with Sam Mael. We had a lot of ideas, and a lot of these ideas come straight from what we did with AnonymOS. We got a lot of requests after folks got AnonymOS in their hands and they started using it. And one of the biggest requests we got was, hey, how can I, how can I run this in, in a context where I can have machines behind my AnonymOS box actually seeing the internet anonymously? So this is what we set out to build. So the drawing board, again, uh, as per AnonymOS, our first incarnation, uh, we wanted to design a system that was secure from the ground up. Again, if the box itself is not inherently secure, it's going to be hard to remain anonymous when people are rooting your box. Uh, we also want transparent anonymity, and transparency is key here because we want ease of use. Uh, although Samael may not be something your grandmother is going to use, we'd like to know that, hey, anybody who wants to can power up a box, pop in the CD, boot up, and essentially have the ability to 
hide what they're doing from anybody they don't feel should be privy to it. With that, we set out to architect this solution. Now, many of you may know we built AnonymOS on OpenBSD. There were a couple of reasons we opted not to go OpenBSD for SAMIL. One of the most important reasons uh, had to do with the final bullet point here. We wanted to make sure that we did not continue to put a significant burden on the Tor network. Uh, we released AnonymOS in January. We honestly expected, hey, we're going to have a couple hundred people in the room. If everybody tells three friends, we'll get, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 downloads shortly after we release. Uh, within two to three days, I think within two days, we were up to 170,000 downloads of AnonymOS, and we're currently sitting at around 300,000 downloads. Now, I don't know how many people are actually out there using AnonymOS on a day-to-day -day basis, but the bottom line is giving that many people access to the Tor onion routing network without requiring them to operate Tor servers potentially creates a problem. So we said, hey, if we're going to do this and we're going to do it right, we need to run a Tor server as well. Uh, this was one of the primary justifications in using Linux, specifically Gen2 Linux, in that OpenBSD has issues that essentially prevent us from really operating a Tor server in the manner we'd want to. And I'll be happy to provide more information and links as to why towards the end of the presentation. So here's what we did. We said, hey, we're going to take a Linux box and a little bit of IP tables and net filter magic. We decided we wanted to use Squid for local caching. Those of you that have used Tor know that it is not always the fastest means to browse, check your mail, and chat with your friends. We're using Privoxy primarily for defense in depth. Uh, Privoxy and Tor really gained a relationship because of tools that leaked DNS requests. We don't or won't have that problem in SAMIL because of the design of the OS, but nonetheless, Privoxy provides a few things that we wouldn't otherwise get if we weren't using it, and I'll, again, I'll go into more detail shortly. We're using a tool called TransProxy Tour. We actually started with a tool called Transox, and after a little bit of testing, opted to go with a newer, albeit slightly lesser tested tool, uh, TransProxy Tour, which is handling essentially transparently anonymizing or more appropriately transparently soxifying all of the traffic that would not normally go through our Tor Sox proxy. Tor, again, is providing all of our anonymity and encryption, and I should be careful in saying this. Although traffic is encrypted between Tor nodes, this does not necessarily mean that all of your traffic, which might normally be in the clear, is going to be safe from prying eyes. On the local side as well as on the far remote side, if you're running clear text traffic, it's still clear text traffic. But the traffic is at least encrypted amongst Tor nodes. And again, we opted to start a Tor server automatically. So here begins phase three. Phase three of the software development lifecycle at Chaos Theory is panic. Oh my god, we've put all these design goals together. How in the hell are we actually going to do this? So. Here's what we did. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail here, and then I'm going to, uh, to let one of my other guys give you a little bit more detail about how we made all this work. But the 50,000-foot overview, we opted to use Gen2 as a base. Most of us use Gen2 uh, on the Linux boxes we have in our own networks. Uh, it is an excellent base. It's highly customizable. Because it is based on source or because it is built from source, it tends to provide higher performance than we might get out of a stock binary build. Um, it's easily maintainable, and most of us are pretty big fans of the Portage package management system. Show of hands, Gentoo users in the audience. I kick ass. Fuck, yeah. All right. So again, uh, there are issues with running Tor servers uh, on either OpenBSD or versions of FreeBSD. We eliminated our, our Tor server issues. In theory, it should work on Intel Max, although I will be honest and tell you up front, we have not really done any testing here. So. This certainly deserves a little bit more examination. This also means it's easy to install on your local hard drive, USB stick, compact flash, or really whatever you want. Again, with AnonymOS, we didn't provide a mechanism for installing it to your own box automatically. We wanted to uh, overcome that with SAMIL. Again, we use IP tables and NetFilter, default firewalling mechanisms in Linux. This provides not only our firewall functionality, again, bearing in mind that this is an anonymizing gateway, it's potentially going to sit at the front of your network in front of all of the other devices. So it needs to function like any other good, solid enterprise firewall would. So we're handling firewalling functionality. We're also using NetFilter to force traffic into our transparent proxies. 
or into our soxifying proxies. In this case, we're, we're doing it with essentially three components, squid, you'll see more in a moment, DNS proxy tour and trans proxy tour. And finally, uh, NetFilter is widely used and understood. It's also easy to customize, extend, or update. So you can take our rules and play with them to your heart's content, add, remove, delete as you see fit. Squid. Uh, there was a little bit of an internal debate about using Squid, and we, we decided to go ahead and do it because the bottom line, you don't want it, you can turn it off. Um, Squid does provide transparent web proxying. That's the first piece, so that's nice. We don't have to worry about configuring any of the clients behind SAMIL. We want to plug them into the network, let them get an IP, and go about their business without having to set browser proxy settings or SOX proxies in their game clients, etc. So we get transparent proxying through Squid. We also get caching, both good and bad. Uh, from a performance perspective, caching is good. How much it will help with your browsing really depends on your individual network and, and what your users are doing. Uh, however, in addition to improving performance, it also stands to reduce overall anonymity. Uh, because there is no anonymity when we are retaining cached data locally, the SAMIL box itself will potentially become a source of information about what your users are doing. You might want to consider turning off the cache, turning down the cache, or disabling Squid entirely if this concerns you. Um, and essentially, the system will work perfectly without Squid if you disable it and then uh, modify your firewall rules appropriately so that the firewall is not trying to force traffic into it. From here, Privoxy. Privoxy is an oldie but a goodie. Uh, again, it's really more defense in depth than anything else, designed to, or not designed, implemented in conjunction with Tor to overcome limitations, old versions of Firefox, other tools that leak DNS requests. Um, however, even though in our case we are manually grabbing all of the DNS and ensuring it goes out the right place, there are a few things that, that Privoxy provided. Albeit uh, Squid could provide them on its own, uh, Privoxy does a, a pretty good job out of the box at doing things like hiding personal browser settings, hiding browsing history, stopping refers, tra uh, changing user agents. So we, we kept Privoxy in the chain, and as well, it also blocks ads, web bugs, and other tracking mechanisms that Beth was talking about when we talked about marketers and uh, data collection. So uh, again, Privoxy's there. The system will work perfectly fine without it, so long as you modify your firewall rules. Uh, by default, the chain, though, will include both Squid and Privoxy. From there we go to TransProxy Tour. TransProxy Tour, again, is the tool that we decided to use as an alternative to TransSox. Uh, TransProxy Tour is a, a, a bit of a newer development. Um, it has a, a few potential advantages and a few differences in the way it's written, the way it works. Um, primarily, it, number one, it's written in Perl. Number two, it has multiplexed I.O. So we should potentially see some performance improvements using TransProxy Tour instead of TransSox. Uh, ultimately, though, what TransProxy Tour does is it takes information that is not designed to go through a SOX proxy, it SOXifies it and hands it off to Tor so that Tor is going to be able to take it and anonymize it appropriately. Uh, the other cool thing about TransProxy Tour is that it works in both Linux and BSD. So the way we look at it is for future iterations of either SAMIL or AnonymOS, we have a single component that will allow us to transparently anonymize without going through some of the machinations that we went through in, anon in Anonymous OS to accomplish that goal. And of course, Tor. I am not going to go into significant detail on Tor, uh, mainly because we've done it before. We're on a limited timeline, and I expect that most of you know and understand what Tor does, and uh, at least at a basic level, how it works. Um, Tor essentially provides ubiquitous anonymity for any soxified service, and again, uh, hence our use of TransProxy Tor to ensure that services that don't recognize SOX uh, are still going to be able to uh, pass through the Tor proxy without knowledge of the way it works. Bear in mind that Tor is a tool that is useful both for personal privacy, right? We're trying to protect ourselves against uh, nasty legislation that's going to allow people to collect all of our personal data and sell it to marketing agencies or give it to government agencies that uh, might think you're a terrorist because you come to DEF CON. But bear in mind, it's also very useful to those same agencies. Uh, when FBI is out trying to investigate child porn, uh, it, it's pretty important, in fact, it's pretty critical, that they can do so without you know, a lab full of guys coming from an FBI.gov address. Um, granted, there are other means and mechanisms by which to investigate things like child porn and gain some level of anonymity, but the bottom line is this provides 
all of us, all of the good guys, so to speak, with a means for anonymity that we haven't really otherwise had. Um, that is essentially the list of components that make up SAMIL in terms of what it does. Um, with that, I am going to turn this over and pass the mic to Archon. Archon is going to take all of these bits and pieces now and tell you how it works. All right. Hell yeah. So everyone wants to know how it works. Well, right here you can see we've got four simple lines to explain exactly how it works. One, as we all know, Senator Stevens has told us that the Internet works through tubes. So of course our service also uses tubes. <laughs> They also take advantage of the fact that, uh, as I'll explain a little bit later, trolls like onions, and trolls and onions play an important part of how this whole thing works. And you want to be careful that when your data gets mungled, you don't get your name translated from Tuttle into Bungle, because otherwise you're going to have to file for a 26 B stroke 6, and Deagle 9 is going to hate you, and we're not going to listen to you unless we get the right forms. And I guess not enough people have seen Brazil to get that one, so. <laughs> All right, tubes. So we have tubes. <laughs> we need tubes to get the internet to work. Even though all of us are familiar with things like ARP and IP and, you know, layer one, two, and three, we're all wrong. It's tubes. So we have our tubes from the client boxes. They come into our fancy-smancy gateway. And then we take the, 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 these tube packets. And if we see a web packet, we actually take that, transparently push it into Squid. Squid takes the data does its own little caching when it gets the data back on the receiving side, but in the meantime pushes it into Privoxy. Privoxy takes it, tries to scrub it. Again, you need to be careful that we don't mistakenly misscrub your data, but basically we're just trying to cut out things that might easily identify you on a higher layer, higher layer than the IP layer for uh, anonymity's sake. It then directly pushes that into Tor, um, <clears throat> bypassing the Tor, uh, the transproxy process when, you, when you're using your web traffic. Um, all your other traffic, however, is magically taken through IP tables, pushed into this wonderful utility, TransProxy Tor, which then pushes it directly into Tor using the SOX protocol. Um, basically, TransProxy tool, Tor is a wrapper that takes the raw packet data and turns it into SOXified traffic for Tor to understand. Uh, there's also a second utility that comes with TransProxy Tor. It's called DNS Proxy Tor. And it basically does the same thing, except that it initiates a SOX DHCP request. Um, one of the great things about the SOX DHCP request is that it is blindingly fast, no matter how slow Tor is. Um, <clears throat> next is to why Torals and onions are important. This is how we explain why Tor is slow. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, at the end of every one of these little tubes that grows all over the internet, we have trolls. And trolls, as everyone knows, really like onions. So all of our traffic, appearing as large onions being pushed through these tubes, sometimes they get distracted. And the trolls will take our packets, and they'll hold on to them. They'll keep them. They'll put them on their shelves and do whatever they want, sell them on eBay, you know, whatever they want to do with it. Traffic gets lost. Things get slow. And, um, you know, we have Warcraft to blame for it. So. <laughs> Um, here's a nice graphical explanation of what I'm trying to describe to you here. And um, <clears throat> basically, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, the magic that happens is all through TransProxy Tor, we have to confess. That is our secret, really. Um, that and some IP chains, uh, IP tables rules uh, is where, where the good stuff comes in. Um, it's off the chain. It's off the chain, man. It's off the chain. So, <laughs> um, we have, uh, I, you know, I, I can't really think of anything else to describe to you as far as how the back end works other than magic controls. So to cover a little bit of the front end, um, we tried to come up with a nice Linksys, D-Link styled web interface for you to configure your box with. <laughs> You're going to get a little demo of it here in a minute. But in the meantime, we basically have the ability to configure your internal or your external interface. You can set up any wireless settings that you need. Because we ran into some serious problems with virtually all cards not being able to accept AP mode, uh, we've removed support for that from the web interface. Uh, basically, only if you have something that host AP can support uh, can, can, can you set up that mode. So you really only have the ability from the wireless front end side to join uh, a managed uh, AP, and then from there, you can have the traffic routed through your box. We have tested that it does work, and that is how our demo is going to work. Um, <clears throat> 
We've got a little Python in the back end. We took advantage of a little typo here. Cheetah is being used, but more importantly, WebPY from Aaron Schwartz is where we use our web framework from. Uh, we've got some little bit of JavaScript in there uh, for helping you configuring your wireless and DHCP options, and we've got the necessary tour options in there to be able to provide your email address for Decaldine to hit you up if he's got a problem, um, give it a name, and set any bandwidth limitations you want on the external tour server side. And uh, that's about it. I think we're about ready for a demo. That's me! What's up, everybody? This is a Mac. I don't know Sorry. how to work Move. this. Move! I'll get my own. So I didn't hear anybody laugh to the a little Python in your back end. What's up with that? Are y'all awake? Python in your back end. I'm not into it. Maybe some people are. It's all good. We're cool. <laughs> developers, developers, developers. Is this thing working? <laughs> Rails in your back end. Rails with trails. Skid marks are not good, no matter what anybody tells you. Come on. Have at it. All right. Yay! All right. I just want to thank everybody up here. These fuckers worked their ass off, and we've been up all night long. Yeah, all week straight, and the week before that. So uh, let's actually see if this works. This is going to be awesome. And this is the whole point of me being up here, is just to pull up a web page and go, fuck yeah. So what would people like to see? Something obscene. <laughs> Who here was it? Who's here uh, saw us at Smookon? Raise your hand. So nobody understands granny trannies. Did you <laughs> did you read the Wired article? I don't know. We'll see if it comes up. I just gotta see this. Oh yeah, this is my awesome web page. <laughs> Wait till you see. This is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, look at that granny. Plus tranny uh, equals granny trannies, and that's my awesome HTML. So uh, let, let, let's go into uh, how you're going to set this up. Basically, you are going to... No, uh, we did not let him design our web interface. <laughs> Actually, okay, if you click on the lady right here, I'll bring you to the setup page. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. In a dot. Yeah. Chill. IP chicken. Oh, one. Yeah. Give us an IP chicken. Man, y'all chill the fuck out. This is my part. Was I speaking during <laughs> yours? Hell no. <laughs> Damn, bitch. I, I can't even type. <laughs> HTTPS <laughs> colon slash and then another <laughs> slash. Uh, motherfucker, I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> and then we hit enter. All right. We have our own self signed certificate. Bam. <laughs> hit OK. It's, uh, we're going to accept that. And the, the username is admin. And the password, we're not going to tell it to you. You have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> we're only $49,000 short of the VeriSign. Uh, yeah, uh, it actually is default is admin, admin, uh, whenever you have to go in. But we've changed that uh, just so you can get in. OK, yay. So uh, what you do is it starts out uh, as our status page. It basically gives you all the network interfaces and their current state. Uh, along with uh, the output from RC status, and there's just a lot of shit there. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, so the first thing that you're going to do is you want to go and configure your external and your internal network interfaces. Uh, being seen that this is wireless, uh, you just uh, go over here and you drop down the box and pick uh, your interface. Uh, add in the IP address, or uh, when you use wireless, add in the SSID, WEP, uh, and uh, what mode you need to set it into, and if you want to change the MAC address so uh, it adds to your anonymity. You can set up the internal network interface here. Uh, basically, this the box works in two ways. It can work as 
a standalone proxy or it can add as your actual gateway. Uh, so if you're act if you want it to be your gateway, we have a DHCP server built in, uh, and you can serve up IP addresses to everybody. Uh, under general, this is where you would change your uh, admin password. You can set your time zone. Uh, NTP is not run, not running by default. So if you need to run it, uh, this is where you would check it. Oh, it is now. Okay, sweet. We're awesome. Uh, you can turn on SSH if you need to get to the box from the internal interface uh, and uh, export logs. Uh, we had a serious debate about this, but... It only, it only allows you to export your logs to an internal IP. So yeah, damn if, if you haven't specified your internal network, you won't be able to set that, and you will only be able to do it based on what your, the network for your internal network. You will not be able to push it over Tor. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now we click on Tor, and this is where you would put your uh, the Tor virtual network. Basically, we have it set up default, and this is uh, basically where IP chains. Yeah, I actually didn't. I didn't think about that. Basically, what happens is we if lie. anyone's used Tor before, they're familiar that there's these dot onion addresses. So you can have anonymized services running. In order for that to work, what Tor does by default is it assigns uh, the DNS lookup for any dot onion address to a 127 IP. That doesn't work when you're working through a gateway mode. So you have the option to specify your own network range for it to pick IPs from for dot onion addresses. We picked what we thought would be a fairly unused default, but we also gave you the ability to change it in case that happens to conflict with either your internal network or any other network in your routing path. Sweet. <laughs> uh, so this is where you would configure uh, anything based on Tor. And that's, the, uh, that's how our interface works. So, so uh, what? Uh, cool stuff. Uh, you know, one other thing we should probably point out is that uh, not only is SAMIL installable as a gateway onto, you know, essentially any box within your network, SAMIL, like Anonymous OS, is a live CD. So should you desire, this is uh, basically an instant gateway. Drop the CD in any x86 box or potentially a, a new Intel Mac even, uh, at reboot, and you've got a gateway device that's going to provide transparent an anonymization and a, a good external firewall. Nope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Okay, uh, so w one of the big things with Anonymous OS that uh, we had a lot of problems, or that the shit just wouldn't work, is you can't, uh, Flash wasn't there, uh, you can't look at you know any type of streaming media. So basically, you could just take your whole machine, and whatever you can do on your machine, we're going to push this shit through the gateway, and you can use it. You know what I'm saying? So, but minus ICMP minus and UDP. ICMP and UDP. Uh, so no playing games, tough shit. <laughs> Uh, the, yeah, that's whatever. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> whatever. Okay, this guy is coming out of the closet, and he can't believe it. So we're gonna click on that. Uh, Flash <laughs> games. There was this one cool one that I saw earlier. Uh, man, fuck. Where's it at? IP chicken. Yeah. Fuck hell yeah. Show us a damn IP was. chicken. IP chicken. Y'all use that? Raise hand. Woo! IP chicken's awesome. Uh, so basically, what this is going to do is it's going to uh, tell you your uh, external IP. Uh, since we are going through Tor, it's going to give us something that is totally not us. It's an exit node on the Tor network. So it's saying that we're coming out of some uh, university uh, .pl. Where is, does anybody know? Where Poland. That? Poland. Uh, so we're using a Polish university. Uh, we mask uh, all browsers to make the user agent looks like it's a Windows XP box running uh, Firefox 1.5.0.2. Uh, so all completely customizable through Privoxy's default config engine. So if you if you've used Privoxy before, you can change your user agent and your browser refer strings, etc., directly from the Privoxy interface. Right. Yeah, if you need to change anything that we didn't give you an interface for, man that shit and figure it out yourself. Uh, you know, this. We're yeah, it, seriously, read the fucking manual. You and know, damn, do something. We did. We, we did most of the damn work. Come on. So all right, all right. We, so we, YouTube, what? I, what is this fucker doing? On it, on it. It's probably not playing yet. No. So uh, Flash games. Wow, what's that? What's that cool? Oh, we're at Google.au. Fuck it, man. Addicting games. I'm addicted. 
Uh, uh, this is some bullshit. Stinger heats. I haven't tested this. This is awesome. Uh, I've got ten minutes. <laughs> That's what he's telling me. Uh, what'd you say? Yeah. Kit and can't. I don't even know what that is. I don't need, how to, that looks good. Has this guy started loading yet? Oh yeah. You can't hear him. Yes. I can hear him. He's saying, "Look at me. Look at my lip. I go. I'm gonna do it again." Go back. Huh? Okay. Hey, what's happening? Pull a toothpick out my mouth. Stick it in my lip. All right, so anyway, man, you guys get the gist. This shit works. It's awesome. Uh, hey, how do I go back to presentation mode? Press view slideshow, I think. Uh, view. Slideshow, start. Slideshow. Slideshow. Oh, hey, do you, where? Slideshow. Yay! Okay, hold on. Let me haul ass do this real quick. All right. So you've seen all this. Kevin! Woo! All right. So uh, the fourth, is this the final phase? Yes. We have five. five. We have five. So this is the fourth. Hence, IV. Search for the guilty. Uh, that is us. Dr. Chaos, Fade, myself, Archon, Beth. We all worked our ass off. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, you know, shit doesn't work. Pipe it to Dev Null. We don't fucking care. <laughs> uh, okay, and the final stage is punishment of the innocent. Uh, we would like to thank Transproxy Tor. Go to this website. That's the .onion site. You can only reach it through using Tor. Uh, and that's Fabian Keel. Uh, thank you, uh, the, the tour guys, Roger Dingledean, uh, I forgot the other two dudes. Dingledine. Roger, are you here? He's not here. Don't stand up! <laughs> Who are the other two guys? That's Paul Nick Syverson and, and Nick Paul. Matthewson. Hell yeah. Can I get a round of applause for those guys? Those guys worked their ass off. So you could say anonymous. Thank you to the EFF. Without them... Some of us will be fucked right now, and uh, I'm doing all right. <laughs> These are the people at the EFF. Fuck yeah. Uh, what, what should we do? Uh, or what should you do? You need to run a fast tour server. Otherwise, that shit's slow, as you already <laughs> saw. Call your representative. Vote. Uh, support tour. Support the EFF. They'll take volunteering. They'll take money. Huh? Dunk tank. Dunk tank. Go to the dunk tank. Jesus, five dollars. I even saw a YouTube video earlier. Some dude just walking up and punching the shit. Fuck that. Go up and pay your money. Damn. <laughs> Jump in. Look, we need help. Seriously. Uh, do you want swag? Give me a question. Fuck yeah. Yeah, this is the time for you guys to ask questions, and I think we might even have a box of goodies back here. So, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, do we have a? Just any questions? Mic? I don't care. Stand up. Start yelling. Right here. Right here. John Cal. Yes. Yes, okay. it is by default. Okay. So we have the internet made of pipes, and we got a squid, and the squid reaches down with its tentacle and tries to grab the onion from a troll. Now, if the troll chops its tentacle off, trolls don't. I mean, sorry, squid don't have bones. So, well, so can I be tracked from the tentacle that gets chopped off, and will that make the squid toss its cookies? Which dep <laughs> dep depends. What is uh, what's your thaco? <laughs> what size shirt? <laughs> what size? Shirt? Awesome question. Squid size. All right, go ahead. Yeah, if you want to ask you a question, come up to the mic. Hey, um, Nick here. I'm one of the tour guys. Before hey. you put this to bed, I want to really beg, beg you for a feature. And if you say no, I want to do it in public so the next people to do something like this put in the same feature. Okay. I want to beg you for an auto tour update because in one year, the version of tour you shipped with this thing is going to be obsolete and dead and it won't work anymore. That is why we've provided you with a stage three tarball that you can install yourself via stage Gentoo. Four. Lovely. Oh, and can four, I trade you but some? You can install, and we have included so far any portage overlay e builds that we had to supply ourselves. So working with that and then future e-build updates that either we or Gentoo would provide, hopefully you can get that done. As far as updating the live CD, 
We'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> and so on that basis, for instance, we, we're actually using the, the very latest security update for Tor. So for instance, despite the fact that 1.1.22 yes. is what's stable in the Tor uh, Portage tree, we're actually using the 1.1.1.0.2.3.1.1.2.3 that was recently released to correct server issues, client issues, et cetera. So with okay. the custom e-build and with Portage at your disposal, you should be able to, we're hoping to facilitate keeping Tor up to date so it doesn't become obsolete. The one thing that we did do is we did an overlay and we did our own tour to the latest update that didn't have a fucking e-build yet, and that was a pain in the fucking ass, but we got it. All right, we got five minutes. Come up here. Thank you very much for fucking When you guys ask a question, tour. give us your shirt size if you want some, some cool shirts. They're, they're really cool. So uh, I had a question for you guys. You have done a lot of anonymizing proxy work, that kind of thing. Uh, what are your guys' opinions on the actual legal risks you take being a Tor exit node for other people's traffic? So you, you I am can, not a fucking you. problem. You can use a size 12 <laughs> rope for the noose if you want. Um, we, we personally believe that it shouldn't be a legal issue, and so we therefore take the stance that we're going to assume that it's not a legal issue, and you're going to have to catch us. There's actually a great answer for that. Uh, that that's addressed very well. It's a live CD. At Run! The, uh, at the tour site, <laughs> and by the EFF as well, and the bottom line is there, there certainly are risks in being a tour exit node, depending on how the, the nodes themselves are used. One of the, the biggest things that we can do to stop that is make sure that all of us aren't doing things that are going to A, ruin the Tor network, and B, cause legal problems for others. So don't fucking run bit, BitTorrent through you know, your, your Tor Onion routers. It's not good for anybody. It's going to cause somebody like Archon to get a, a notice from the RIAA claiming that he's downloading new Britney Spears albums. And at the same time, it's also going to slow down the Tor network a whole a hell of a lot. So I mean, there's certainly no way to avoid all potential issues. but. Again, I think, I think it's probably better addressed or best addressed by the EFF and by TOUR and a lot of the information that's at their page describing how and why they did what they did. So Good answer. Period. It's your size. Oh, it's your size. Come on up. All right, go ahead. So I'm wondering about uh, running it off of like a USB thumb drive. What's the total size? Uh, the actual CD, what's that? Mine is the stage four tarball. Uh, we're probably going to have two releases out there. Uh, you're probably looking at, I think we're like at 90 megs. 111, 111 megs, sorry. Uh, when you add in the stage four tarball so you can install to the hard drive, it basically doubles. So you're looking at 200 to 240 megs. Cool. So it, it's way smaller than the 700 meg bullshit that we gave you last time. Uh, so awesome. All right, next person. So what's next? What's next? We're not fucking going to do any more of this anonymous shit because I think we've pretty much toured a new butthole and we're fucking up tour. Uh, but at least now, we, uh, now your uh, box acts as a tour server. So uh, hopefully that will put more boxes on the net, make the shit a little bit faster for you. Um, what's the future? It's whatever our pot smoking adventures take us. You never know. Just a comment on the squid. You can set it to not cache or set it to uh, delete the cache whenever you want. Turn cache off. True. Fuck it. Just turn it off if you don't want yeah, it. it. And, and in addition to that, as we've recently found out, for people who run squid, there are actually a lot of websites that don't work well because of squid. And um, there could be other motivations for not, you know, for just disabling squid yourself. Such uh, as, I got to get my fucking hotmail. Duh. But that being said, it really does improve the performance of Tor. Dude, I'm a fucking badass at Hotmail.com. <laughs> fucking try. It's all good. Just a quick question. Yes. Did you include NARC on the live CD for Sam I.O.? Uh, no, NARC is not included. It's, it's, uh, it's, gonna, it's a SourceForge project. Okay. So, yes. Uh, I need somebody to fucking stump me. Give me yeah. something yeah. good. Give us a stumper. I, I did something at Layer 1 that seemed to go over real well. What happened is I, I ran out of money and didn't have the ability to go out and buy t-shirts for swag. So at Layer 1, I went out and picked up a six-pack of Guinness and gave away Guinness for questions. Everybody seemed to like that. In fact, they liked it more than our fucking shirts. Um, but uh, We got we're, fucking we're Jack. Here. We're all in from Atlanta. So all dirty, right. dirty South represent. Right, we we gotta need go. a good question. Fucking quick. Do it. Stop us. Okay, has, um, yeah. has anyone running a tour or exit point ever been subpoenaed for whatever information on the yeah, server? Yeah, I'm sure they have. Roger and them have lots of information on their site. That's not our gig. 
Yeah. Well, but we just implement the I'm shit. I'm sure they have, and I'm sure that they that they couldn't possibly comply. I, I don't know. What Nick Matthewson said a moment ago was, if anybody does get threatened with legal action for using Tor as an uh, as an exit node, um, they're looking. The EFF is looking for test cases. They want they want information. They want to work with folks that are being threatened with legal action to help avoid this in the future. So. All right, cool. We got to get off the stage. We're going to be out at the bar. We need help. If you're a developer, fucking come talk to us. If you have ideas, fucking come talk to us. Because we want to make this shit fucking right. Thank you very much.